While most systems of medicine have developed over centuries and even millennia of refinement and practice, homeopathy is a relative newcomer, being developed only 200 years ago. In this lesson, we'll explore the history and principles of homeopathic medicine, as well as evaluate the current state of knowledge concerning its safety and efficacy. Homeopathy was introduced as a form of medicine in the 18th century by the German physician Samuel Hahnemann, who was a village doctor in the early days of his career. But then he gave up the practice of medicine and dedicated himself as a writer and translator of works of Materia Medica. As is evident in his writings, he was very dissatisfied with the state of medicine at the time, and he dedicated his work to investigating what he perceived to be medicine's errors. This period also coincides with the time in which the import of new medical ingredients from the Americas to Europe, such as the stimulant coffee, the purgative ipecac, and the astringent bitter cinchona bark, captured the imaginations of doctors. Hahnemann was clearly interested in these ingredients based on his writings, which included this 1803 essay on the concept that many diseases are caused by the consumption of coffee. Hahnemann's development of homeopathic medicine was based on two core principles of like cures like and law of minimum dose. Homeopathy uses materia medica of plant, animal, and mineral origin in the preparation of medicaments. Examples of these include chamomile, onion, arnica, white arsenic, crushed whole bees, belladonna, and stinging nettle. However, the preparation of homeopathic remedies differs greatly from those of medical herbalism traditions as the material is heavily diluted with excipients such as water, alcohol, or sugar. In homeopathic preparations, the materials may in fact be diluted to one part of the material into 10,000 or even a billion or trillion parts of the solution. Under this system, the perceived efficacy of the final formulation is greater when more dilute, and this is based on the concept of water memory, or molecular memory, of the material in the solution into which it is diluted. As the proposed mechanism for homeopathy does not follow the widely accepted laws of physics, chemistry, or pharmacology, it is subject to much criticism and many deem this to be a type of pseudoscience. Historically, the centesimal, or C scale, was used, and this refers to dilutions by a factor of 100 at each stage. For example, a 2C dilution would entail diluting one part of the substance into 100 parts of an excipient, and then taking one part of this solution to be further diluted in another 100 of the excipient, yielding a final dilution of one part material into 10,000 parts excipient. Likewise, a 5C dilution would yield one part in 10 billion, a 6C dilution would yield one part in 1 trillion, and so on. Today, though, other forms of notation are much more common for describing the final dilution level of a homeopathic remedy, and you can look for these numbers on the homeopathic remedy packaging. For example, you might find bottles labeled with a D, followed by a number, or an X preceded by the number. This refers to dilutions by decimal potency and uses a factor of 10 at each dilution stage. A homeopathic remedy labeled as D6 in dilution factor would be equal to one part of material into 10 to the minus 6 of excipient, or one part in a million. This would be of the same dilution factor as a remedy labeled as 6x. Here you can see how many dilutions that actually represents. Importantly, most commercially available homeopathic products on the market today range from dilution factors of 3x to 6x, or one part in 1,000 to one part in 1 million. Despite the level of dilutions in most homeopathic products, some in fact can be quite dangerous, especially if they have a low dilution factor of the active ingredient, such as 1x, and especially if they contain toxic substances such as arsenic or belladonna, which is also known as deadly nightshade extracts. For example, 
In 2017, the Food and Drug Administration announced a warning that they had found elevated levels of deadly nightshade in teething products for infants, which greatly exceed the amounts claimed on the label, alerting parents of the potential danger and to avoid such products, listing the dangers or side effects such as seizures, difficulty breathing, excessive sleep, muscle weakness, and more. Homeopathic ingredients may include plants, minerals, animals, and their byproducts, such as those crushed whole bees, and even otherwise poisonous substances like belladonna. The dilutions may be performed in a number of excipients, such as water, sugar, gels, and other pharmaceutical fillers. However, homeopathic remedies are not only used for oral delivery, some are made for topical applications as well. One last topic to cover on formulations is that of certain homeopathic products called nosodes or homeopathic immunizations. Nosodes are defined as a homeopathically prepared remedy made from an infectious disease product either directly from the bacteria or virus or less directly from a tissue purported to contain it. And these have been touted as vaccine substitutes. This conceptual model does not follow modern understandings of immunity and nosodes are not suitable alternatives to vaccines. There is no credible evidence to support the efficacy of nosodes. So what are the main takeaways concerning homeopathic medicine? According to the website of the United States National Center for Complementary and Integrative Medicine at the NIH, there is very little evidence to support homeopathy. More data on safety is needed, and some homeopathic remedies may have enough harmful ingredients to cause serious side effects and drug interactions. Yet, despite the lack of scientific evidence, according to the United States 2012 National Health Interview Survey, an estimated 5 million adults and 1 million children use homeopathy and out-of-pocket costs not covered by insurance Four homeopathic products reached $2.9 billion in the U.S. and $170 million for visits to homeopathic practitioners. Importantly, in contrast to other systems of traditional complementary and alternative medicine to be covered in other lessons here, it is worth noting that as a system of medicine, Homeopathy is a newcomer, only 200 years old, and was spurred by the writings of a single doctor. Other systems of medicine, on the other hand, have been developed and modified over centuries and even millennia. And evidence in the form of historic texts and other written documents can attest to the extensive experimentation and optimization of both medical materials and their therapeutic uses by many healers and scholars. Now it's time to experiment. The concept of dilutions is one that you can try out at home. So here's my challenge for this lesson. Create your own homeopathic formulation using the decimal system. Try making your own 3x and 6x formulation by measuring out six cups of water, using one cup volume of water each. Then you should add one drop of food coloring to the first cup and use a spoon to stir it up. Then take one and a half tablespoons of that first cup and mix it into the second cup. Stir and repeat again, moving one and a half tablespoons each time. Make some observations. How does the amount of your active agent change from one dilution to the next? Do you see a difference in the color? Also, you might want to take a look around the house and see if you have any homeopathic remedies at home. If so, take a look at the packaging to determine which dilution factor was used. Search the literature to examine the science behind the safety and efficacy of that product.